Hey guys, my name is Rachel and today I'm giving a book versus movie review for Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. And before we get into anything, I just want to include a quote here from the author himself when he was interviewed about how he felt about the movie. I wasn't really looking for someone to do an ironclad faithful adaptation. I was looking for something that was interesting that would surprise me. And I wanted to start off with that because if you've read Annihilation or if you've seen the movie, you know that they are very, 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 very different. But at the same time, they accomplish the same goals, which is what we're going to talk about today because... Hey guys, Editing Rachel here. I realized that I didn't actually give a description of what this book or movie is about. So before we get into anything else, I just wanted to let you know that Annihilation is a cosmic horror slash weird fiction novel about a team of female scientists that goes into an unknown area deemed Area X if you're reading the book or deemed The Shimmer if you're watching the movie and they're not really sure what has caused this phenomenon but all they know is that people go in and they don't really come out or if they do come out they're not the same and no one knows what's causing this phenomenon or what happens once you're inside. I do need to apologize in advance for the wind. I chose to record outside this day and the wind just did not cooperate with me and I have just found out that the mic I've been using is not working with my current recording device. So bear with me, it does get better, I promise. I do decide to move later on in the video. I probably should have just re-recorded the whole thing, but that's not really my style, so thanks for sticking in there with me. Now, I first watched the movie Annihilation about two years ago. It was a random red box pickup with my husband, and I ended that movie confused as heck. We have since watched it an additional three times, and every time I leave the movie with another theory. When I found out that there was a book that it was based off of, I had to buy the book simply to see if it would give me more answers. And you guys, I have a new favorite subgenre after this. Weird fiction, cosmic horror, Lovecraftian horror, whatever you want to call it. I love this book. In fact, I loved it so much that the other day, I bought the sequels, the rest of the trilogy, and I cannot wait to start them. Once I finish Jurassic Park, I will start book number two, which, by the way, these are much bigger than book one, and I don't know why. I ended up giving this book four stars, even though that doesn't quite fit into my typical four-star categories. I would not recommend this book to anyone that loves reading. Sorry, my mic keeps falling, the wind keeps knocking it over, but I would not recommend this book to anyone who loves reading because it's a difficult book to read, and the reason why the movie and the book are so different is because this would not adapt well to screen at all. The way it's set up, um, it is almost entirely reflections from a main character's head. There's like maybe a hundred words of dialogue altogether. It is excellent and reflective, but it is not a book for everyone. If you like books that'll make you think, if you like books that some people would consider boring, that is just um, a reflection on nature and cycles and corruption and contamination and growth and life and death, all sorts of great things, you should read this book. But I, like, I wouldn't recommend this to everyone. However, like I said, I loved it. I gave it four stars. So let's actually jump into the book versus movie discussion. And what I want to do first is give you a few things that both of them accomplish as the goal. Like they clearly both had these set as the goal. And one of that, one of, one of that thing, one of those things is beauty mixed with terror. And this was something that the director, this was a quote the director used in that same interview. I'm going to link it down below because it was excellent. Um, but the director said that he wanted to maintain this mix of beauty and terror. And <laughs> perfect description. And they were both able to accomplish these goals through different means. So in the book, this is through... Um, Everything here, nothing is explicitly set. It's all left up to interpretation and it's all left up to imagination. Whereas in the movie, you can't do that. You have to use visualizations. So the director of the movie did that through um, um, plants and animals and monsters and like actual lights in the air and provided this element of beauty and terror. Whereas in the book, everything's coming through our main character's eyes. And I'm saying main character because there's not actually a name in the book. In the movie, her name is Lena, but in the book, she's just known as the biologist. Everything's coming through her eyes and we're imagining what she's seeing and she's not saying explicitly what she's seeing. It's more of like a perception and a haze and a general, like, it looks like nothing. <laughs> there's a couple of things where she's like, I can't describe it, but it's a thing. 
and it's terrifying. And you're like, okay, so now your imagination is filling in all of those blanks. And I love doing the mental work of that. Um, I do need to go reread this because I know that there was so much I did not pick up on. Versus the movie, you, you're not imagining it yourself, but it's so visceral and it's so real and it's so smack in your face that it accomplishes the same goal of freaking you out and making you think at the same time that the book did by making you use your imagination. This is not a plot-based novel. This is a character study on one person in the, midst of an, in the midst of an unknown situation. The movie, on the other hand, has a direct goal. It has a direct achievement. Go in, get to the lighthouse, extract data, come back. And so when you're watching the movie, you're really impacted by that specific goal. I can't decide if I want to move because the wind. That would be a lot of work, so I'm not going to move. Putting more of a plot and more of a goal at the end of the day on the movie was able to shift the book from something very reflective and internal. And in the movie, it becomes more of an action-packed, external, we're fighting against something goal-driven movie. The character work in the movie and the book are almost the exact same. I did watch the movie first and I read the book second. When I was reading the book, I couldn't help but picture the characters from the movie because they were the exact same. Like most times when I read a book, I'll shift the, the facial features and what I'm imagining of the character to fit a book character instead of a movie. But for this one, I just use the movie characters because they were so spot on, guys. The best thing that was done with character work in both the movie and the book was this atmosphere of mistrust and suspicion. And the way that they both accomplished these goals was excellent. So in the book, I keep putting it down and I'm gonna pick it back up again. In the book, most of our characters, they don't spend a lot of time together. I would say the majority of the book is our main character out on her own. But whenever she does come in contact with people, she imagines what they've been thinking while she's gone and what she's been thinking about them while she's gone. And it just builds this suspense and suspicion and mistrust and it's excellent. Whereas in the movie, they're all traveling together, they're all working together, but still that mistrust is there because you're not sharing your thoughts with people, you're just walking and you're hiking and so you're still trying to figure out what the other person is thinking while you're in this strange place. So the tone was the same, the characters were the same, the atmosphere was the same, the exploration of the unknown was the same, but now I'm going to talk about some very specific ways that they were different and whether or not that was a good thing or not. So um, in this conversation about characters, the movie specifically adds two additional characters that the book does not have. In the book, there are three characters that we see on screen for the majority of the book and one character that dies pretty early on. So we don't really get attached to her. But from the biologist's perspective and from her mind, we feel a sense of loss for this character who's the anthropologist. And she was supposed to bring a level of comfort and sanity and her expertise would have really aided them in this exploration of whatever they're exploring because I don't want to give any spoilers but her expertise would have really come in handy and so as it's so windy I gotta move I gotta move I'm gonna go sit on the ground but I gotta move So we've changed locations, hopefully this is better wind-wise, but I'm talking quieter because I'm near the camper in the house. I don't remember where I was, so I'm just going to start from the beginning. <clears throat> I'm going to start from the beginning. Um, in the book, there is a fourth character uh, who is called the anthropologist who dies pretty early on, and we feel her loss more from the perspective of the biologist, and as she's thinking about um, how that anthropologist's expertise would be helpful at the time and how her presence on the team would be really beneficial. Whereas in the movie, they added two characters to kind of fill this role and having both of them as well as losing both of them, spoilers, <laughs> um, gives you a greater sense of connection. So you feel the loss more once um, both of them are dead after we got to know them and saw how they provided a sense of hope and sanity instead of just losing them quickly because you're not in their internal mind so you can't see how it's affecting them internally. It has to be external. It has to be on us. That loss has to be on us instead of just on the character. One big difference was with the biologist in the movie named Lena. 
um, her character was changed a lot, and I understand why. Because in the book, the biologist is merely fascinating. She's not relatable, personally. Her story is really centered around her extreme introvertedness and her lack of desire to associate with humans and this gives her just like a weird personality and has her vibing off other people in a really strange way. In the movie uh, she's perfectly normal, not perfectly normal, but her isolationist tendencies and her standoffishness is shown as a mother effer. My mic fell again. <laughs> is seen as a as a symptom of grief, as an impact of grief. I'm going to block the sun. <laughs> this is so difficult today, guys. In the movie, it's because of her grief. In the book, it's just her personality. She's just weird, and she doesn't interact with people very well. And while that's fascinating to read in a character, if it's not relatable in a movie, people aren't going to enjoy the movie. It's just what happens. Another thing that was changed for the movie to make it a better film instead of just a faithful adaptation was the cause of the phenomenon. Um, so specifically in the book there is no cause that is laid out specifically. They don't know what happened to cause it. They just know that there's a place that's affecting things and they're sending people in and some people are coming back but then they die immediately. Whereas in the book they show a meteor or an object descending from space, striking the lighthouse, and you end up seeing at the end an alien type figure um, whose goal is to just kind of grow and spread and change things. But the movie puts a specific antagonist on it, puts a face on the antagonist of the story. It is alien. It is other. It is something we need to overcome, at least according to their perspectives at the beginning of the movie. Whereas in the book, it's more just like there's a strange location. We're going to go explore it. We don't really know what's going on. And they encounter some weird and unknown things, but they never as far as I've read, specifically say alien yet. But you can kind of assume, but at the same time, it's, it's just not explicitly stated. In the movie as well, they put a specific goal, like I already stated, on the journey. They're trying to make it to the lighthouse, which is the source of the shimmer, versus in the book, they are just exploring. And they know where the lighthouse is. Lots of people have gone there before. It's a landmark that they can use for traveling and keeping, keep, keeping track of where they're at. Um, but there's also this location that's away from the lighthouse, which is the underground tunnel tower that in the movie they can find into one. There's a lighthouse with the tunnel tower in it. One big difference, and I'm not really sure why this decision was made, but in the movie, um, along with the cause of the Shimmer's alien, there is this discussion from the scientists on what is happening to the people inside. It's given a specific name, and what is said is that the Shimmer is causing everything inside of it to be refracted onto itself. So light waves are refracted into rainbows everywhere, um, plant genes are refracted to, and it ends up creating like humanoid-shaped plants because apparently if you triple a gene from one plant it gives you a human hox gene i don't understand it fully in the book it's not specifically named it's talked about enough but it's more of a contamination thing happening um specifically the biologist actually gets contaminated by a fungal spore as she breathes it in and that is what starts to affect her not just being in the shimmer and her genes and her dna being refracted but she breathes in something that contaminates her from the inside out i don't know if I've expressed myself very well here, I can say that they're both excellent if you like this kind of mind trippy, confusing work, which I do. The book, let me grab it so I can hold it up again. The book is, again, opened me to a new favorite subgenre of cosmic horror, weird fiction, whatever you want to call it. And I want to read more of this now. The movie, we rewatched it last night in preparation for this video. It's just a really good movie. If you don't like trippy movies, I don't understand why you wouldn't, but I find them enjoyable and I really enjoyed re-watching it last night after having read the book and pointing out to my husband all the things that were different. I think that's really all I have to say. I may end up re-recording this because it's just a big old mess. Probably not because I'm lazy though, but you should read the book or watch the movie. Just give it a shot and let me know what you think. If you've read these, please comment down below. It's like I said, new favorite book. I need to discuss this with people. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I really enjoy- 
why can I not talk? I really enjoy these kinds of book versus movie reviews because I like watching movies and I like reading books. I'm currently reading Jurassic Park and I'm sure once I'm done with that I'll watch the movie and do a book versus movie review. So <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Stay safe, stay classy, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.